Music can be defined as the intentional organization of sound and silence to express an idea. For sound or silence to occur, we need to know when those sounds and silences are supposed to happen. Musicians use timing and note duration to accomplish their goals. We call that rhythm. Rhythm can be one of the more difficult concepts to understand musically, but if you learn the very basics, you can apply those skills to more advanced music. So how do we know how long a note is supposed to be? Several factors come into play. First, let's consider the note duration. There are several types of notes. Here are some of the uh, important ones and what you need to know about them. Leading off is the whole note, spelled with a W, although it does resemble a whole. The whole note gets four beats. That's all you need to know. Second, we have a half note, which looks similar to a smaller whole note, but with a beam. If you know fractions, you may that know that half of a whole is a half. So you may deduce that a half note equals two beats, in which you would be correct. Take note that two half notes equal the duration of a whole note because they both equal four. Next, a quarter note, which looks like a half note, but the circle is filled in black. A quarter note is worth one beat. Or for the fraction oriented, a quarter of a whole is one quarter. A quarter of four is one. Like we did before, notice that two quarter notes are equal to one half note. They are both two beats. Likewise, you should also notice that four quarter notes are equal to one whole note and two half notes, all having four beats. Now that we know some notes and how many beats they are worth, how do we figure out the timing? How long is a beat? This is where a metronome comes in handy. A metronome is a tool that musicians and masochists use to keep a consistent tempo. The tempo is how fast or slow the music goes. When you hear a good song and your head starts to nod or your foot starts to tap, that's usually the beat and the tempo. Tempo is described in a couple different ways. The first is with a romantic language, like Italian or French. Words like moderato and largo and vivace. The only easy way to remember these is to come up with a clever way to remember them. Let's take moderato. That sounds a lot like the English word moderate. That would indicate that you take this piece moderately. When you say the word vivace, your lips and tongue have to move fast to say vivace. This is a way to remember that vivace means quickly. When I see the word largo, I pretend that the R looks like an N, making the word longo, make the beats longo and slow o. There are many charts that label the approximate beats per minute in ranges for each of these uh, terms. More precisely, the piece can be labeled with a beats per minute, or BPM. Clocks lead double lives as a clock and a metronome because it beats 60 beats per minute because there are 60 seconds in one minute. On a metronome, we can dial in the specific BPM from a piece to know exactly how fast the piece is supposed to be. Almost. There is one more aspect of rhythm that must be understood, and that's the time signature. Have you ever heard a singer count a song in? One, two, one, two, three, four. That is an example of how to count beats in music. A majority of popular music is either in duple, two, or triple, three, time. You can figure out if a song is in duple or triple time by the top number of the time signature. If it's divisible by three, it's in triple time. If it's not, it's in duple. You may come across time signatures that are not triple or duple, and we call those odd meters. They could be five or seven, but we simply put groups of two and three together. But that's more advanced music theory. Duple time includes two and four, and there's a ton of music that's in four. If you can think of music that starts, that you can uh, say one, two, three, four, start me up, one, two, three, 
and and two, three, four. Start me up. For some reason that comes to mind. That sounds like it's in four. But Yankee Doodle, Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. That could be in two. One, two, one, two. So those would be in duple time. Two good examples of triple time would be the United States National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early one, two, three, one, two, three. Or my country tis of thee. My country tis of thee. One, two, three, one, two, three. Let's look at this with music. Each group of three beats is separated by a line. We call these lines bar lines. Within these bar lines are bars or measures. The measures are what hold our music. So let's talk more about the time signature. The time signature tells us two numbers. A top number, which we kind of talked about before, and a bottom number. The top number tells us how many beats are in every measure. If the top number is a four, that means there are four beats in every measure, and we're in duple time. If the top number is a three, that means there are three beats in every measure, and we are in triple time. If the top number is six, that means there are six beats in every measure, again in triple time, because it's divisible by three. The bottom number of the time signature tells us what kind of note gets one beat. But wait, I thought quarter notes equal one beat. They do, but that serves more as a reference to how long the other notes are compared to it. When we use notes in music, the time signature tells us what note gets a beat. If the bottom number in the time signature is a four, that means a quarter note gets the beat. I remember this by thinking there are four quarters in a dollar and four quarter notes in a whole note. If the bottom number is a two, that means a half note gets a beat. There's another common number in the time signature, and that number is 8. What kind of note would get an 8? We are talking about the 8th note. It looks like a quarter note, but with a little flag. An 8th note gets half a beat. That means two eighth notes equal one quarter note, because two halves equal one whole quarter note. Eighth notes that occur consecutively are commonly bound together with a horizontal beam. This helps the musician know when beats occur. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's a way to help musicians play the music more easily, and we'll talk about that more. It helps the musician keep the beat a little better. When an eighth note, when an eight is in the bottom number of the time signature, that would mean an eighth note gets one beat. When we have a measure of 4-4, four, four, meaning there are four beats in every measure, and the quarter note gets one beat, and we had four quarter notes, we count those quarter notes as one, two, three, four, and that is the beat. We do it over and over for each measure. If we have a measure in 3-4, meaning there are three beats in every measure, and the quarter note gets the beat, we have three quarter notes, we count those as one, two, three. It's good practice to emphasize the first beat or downbeat to keep up. One, two, three. One, two, three. If you get lost in the music in the two and three, you can always find the downbeat, which is the first beat of the measure. Now let's have a measure of four, four, and have eight eighth notes. We count this as one and two and three and four and. If we line up the quarter notes with the eighth notes, you see where the eighth notes fit into the duration of the quarter notes. Counting and clapping rhythms is the best way to know exactly how a passage is to be played. When we count, we simply keep the beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When I count out loud, I will emphasize when notes are clapped 
which models the beginning or articulation of a note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I will also count when eighth notes are played on the offbeat, which means it doesn't happen on one or two or three or four. One, and, 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 and. If I nod my head, I will nod down on the beat and up on the half beat. One, and, 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 and. In this instance, one is the downbeat and and is the upbeat. These are two common terms for parts of the beat. You might hear the phrase on the upbeat or on the downbeat. Here's a special musician's note. When we count, it's a good idea to do it in your head as you play, and there's a good idea to do something called subdividing. Subdividing takes a beat and makes it smaller, meaning it takes quarter notes and turns them into eighth notes. The smaller the beat that you can count, the more precise the note duration will be. Counting quarter notes as one, two, three, four is not as precise as one and two and three and four and because you're paying attention to two halves instead of one long whole quarter note. The more time in between beats means more time to waver from the beat. You can even subdivide with a metronome. If our piece was written to be played at 100 beats per minute in 4-4 time, the quarter note speed is 100 beats per minute. What is the eighth note speed? It would be two times as fast, so 200 beats per minute. You can play a piece written at 100 beats per minute and have the metronome subdivide the eighth notes for you at 200 beats per minute. It's a great way to practice. Just be sure to remember what note gets the beat so you don't accidentally practice two times too fast or too slow. Sometimes notes are meant to be held for a longer time than a measure would allow. If I had music in 4-4, four, four, and I wanted a note to last eight beats, well, I can't do that because in one measure it only has four beats. But I can use something called a tie, which ties two notes together, or more than two. The first note is played, or articulated, and the duration extends throughout eight beats. With a tie, we do not play the second note, or we do not articulate the second note. We hold the first whole note through the second note for eight full beats. Sometimes we come across a dot that follows a note, and that is similar to a tie. For example, the dotted half note. A dot represents half of the value of the note it follows. In this case, a half note is worth two beats, and the dot is worth half of two beats, which is one. The dotted half note is worth three beats. If a whole note has a dot, the whole note gets four beats and the dot gets half of four beats, which is two, and four plus two equals six beats. Likewise, a dotted quarter note gets one beat for the quarter note, and the dot gets half of one beat. So a dotted quarter note equals one and a half beats. And there's one more note duration we should talk about, and that's the sixteenth note. It's commonly the shortest note we come across in music, and it's one that we can count easily. We know about eighth notes and counting one and two and three and four and. Now we add two more syllables, e and ah, or you write them with the letter e or the letter a. We would count 16 sixteenth notes as one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. Knowing and counting these syllables in music can be an incredible help to playing correct rhythms with a consistent tempo. There's a common rhythm called the dotted eighth sixteenth, where we have a dotted eighth note followed by a single sixteenth note. We would write in the count as one, parentheses, e, and, because we're holding it, parentheses, a. Uh. This is an example of how knowing to count the rhythm in the beat allows you to play with accuracy and precision. Let me talk about a certain scenario. You could have a measure in 4-4 four, four, and it could have four quarter notes. But you could also have a measure of eight eighth notes, each tied to the next, and it would be the same as the measure of quarter notes. It's the same music, but one of the composers is being mean. But most of the time, music is written in a way that's supposed to be the most clear and concise to follow. The example shows that music can be written in many different ways. 
There are slightly more advanced notation devices such as triplets, and these allow the composer to get the triplet feel in a duple time. This can lead to a multitude of possibilities and ways to write the music. And again, basically it means any music can be written in any time signature, but it might change the way the notes are written duration-wise. If I haven't confused you yet, that's fantastic, because I've been confused seven times at least trying to make this. And that shows you how much of a taskmaster rhythm can be to learn and apply. It takes dedication and meaningful work to understand these concepts, but it certainly can be done. Once you grasp them and practice enough, you'll be able to sight-read difficult passages because you will know how to count them.